so still here same session predominantly now Mars so I really need them uh, I think it was more like 20 but I don't have a very strong recollection of when but it was quite a while ago I think it was more like 20 some 42 now the Mars thing was much more recent um I can't remember exactly when it wasn't this year it wasn't last year It may have been around 2013. It's within, within the past five years. Now, between the years 2008 and 2012, I was doing a lot, lot, lot of meditating. All the time. I was doing meditating quite all. Well, like in hours, I'd like feel really quite adept. I would also still get into meditation. I would fall into a trance. It was not really a great state of mind to be in. Generally, I was, I was holding down a job with, you know, living an outward living a life that living a life of meditating and um, I got to a state where I could go to a lot of places. You know, I wanted to at the drop of a hat. It's not like that now then and um, I also used to go to a lot of places you know spontaneously as I did when I was a child excuse me no. and also a lot of lucid dreams you know I think people who have out of, had out of, have out of body experiences that meditate you know they're aware there are many different levels to consciousness. Um, the way of distinguishing between a lucid dream, a natural projection, and an etheric experience, a psychic experience, a form changing experience, you know, so there's, you know, you, you're able to discern in what state you are. The way I would describe this particular a cross between a lucid dream and an astral projection but it felt like my mem memory was involved as well now the first thing always you just become conscious that you know how I get there, what happens before, as with the moon. No idea what happens in the run up to the experience itself or the what I remember. I just track the memory of the event and the moment I become conscious of it. Now this occasion I became conscious, I was lying on the floor. As soon as I became conscious, I knew that there'd been a terrible disaster. I was a survivor. I was very deep underground. I was in a awful place. Like this, these are things. These, these are just instantaneous. You know, you, you because you're conscious. <laughs> waking me up, making me conscious. A man who I'd seen before. Well built, you know, not over muscular, but fit. Um, he had glasses. He was maybe my age now, maybe about forty. Short, reddish, curvish hair. Seen him before. He has really projected to my room. Quite some time before this happened, while I was wide awake, sat in bed, as I am now, exactly the same position as I'm in now. He actually projected into my room. 
walking in a shallow triangle with a woman, an oriental looking woman with long black hair. I knew him. He was waking me up, he wanted to save me. So I stood up and, you know, was conscious of something so horrendous having happened. A state of absolute panic and emergency. Terror. He was urging me to hurry. He wanted me to go to an elevator and he wanted to get me out and he was basically saying there was just enough time to get out. And I couldn't help as I was following him to the elevator, which was nearby. Elevator, whatever. Elevator. Way of getting out. Nearby. And I looked around and behind me the left, I could see, see there was this huge room, and in the corner of the room, there was like a, a pile of carcass of flesh, it looked, you know, just like a huge amount of meat about the bodies, you know, and on top of it was a man, and he was shouting and yelling, and he got mad, right, and the impression I got was that this person and he'd completely lost the plot and killed loads of people and I don't think he was responsible for seeing all of that I, I, I interpreted it as nuclear energy weapons I, I don't really know about energy weapons and I know nuclear, whatever some people might say plasma, whatever something to destroy people and this guy got mad there was panic, everyone was trying to escape most people I wasn't going to come, he was going to go and I'm like, what? And at that moment, I thought about inexplicably my wet boyfriend. And I'm like, I'm not going to leave without my boyfriend. Now this is a mad thing. And I'm like, there might have been an element of dream or subconscious to this thing. Because I don't know, or maybe he really was there. But the upshot was, I left the lift. I wanted to go and find him. The man with the man with the glasses and ginger hair, he just disappeared. I went to a room where there was a small room that was full of computers so the technical work man had had an appointment in there so I got low and I was trying to wake him up even though he was walking around he was behaving like a zombie and he was obviously not dead and he kept saying he had work to do and he had to finish it to do with his computers and I was just scrambling like a baby and I got low enough to wake up and he had a go and he was so upset and he was just did not even register that this was still more intense than that it was just one day small number of people were had formed a queue to get inside this 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 transportation device, this energy transport like a teleportation thing and that's really my memories I'm sort of in a way quite glad I'm making this video because my memory is failing me some of these details a little bit but the overall impression is incredibly vivid but these what I'm trying to describe was was complicated in my way in the first place it was something I'd never seen before. It was something to teleport people and it seemed to have two two levels to it. One of them but it we felt that the place was half destroyed, this thing was half broken. So it didn't look the way it should have looked. I think it had fallen down. And the first thing you had to do was get under this light. Something had fallen over, you had to get under it, a tunnel maze thing. I don't know what it was. And then once you'd got under this, which I felt that this did something to you, to your body, to, to make you able to travel, I don't know. I really don't know, I've not said anything like it. Then, once you'd got under this, behind it there was like a vertical, you stood in this thing like a tube. And I was trying to process what was happening, there was a handful of people there, panicking, trying to get out. And I just remember that this woman kind got through, she got in this thing, and then 
she just started coming apart in front of my eyes. There was no blood, there was nothing like that, but it was horrifying because she just disintegrated in front of me. Now at the time I thought that the device was malfunctioning because she looked panic stricken that the device was malfunctioning and it was killing her. It could be that I was watching somebody teleport, that's what it looks like. But I decided I wasn't going to believe it. <laughs> and I decided I was going to go back to the lift. I went back to the lift. Got in the lift. It's quite an industrial tunnel. It wasn't like a high tech lift. Industrial type of thing. And I was just like. And I just felt like it was only just making it with my body weight in. But it went up a couple of levels. And then its doors opened. And there was a blob woman with a baby pushing a pram out. And my pillow slipped. just came to my head <laughs> that the lift wasn't going to get blown up she came in anyway the lift did go up another few floors and then basically the last thing was we emerged in this lift into a kind of the top of it had a small glass dome on the ground level so you could see and as Three of us, myself and the baby, reached the top of this dome. If I remember right, it, 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 it was seemed broken basically, the lid didn't come off, it was stuck. And, but we could see outside still, and the whole landscape was just a, a wasteland, red rock. And I just remember thinking, there's been a nuclear holocaust, and it's just, well, there's nothing here. And that was the end of that, and then I basically had two possible, two ideas about where it might be. One of them is that it was, it was definitely on the ground. One of them is that it was a deep underground knowledge base in this country, somewhere in the desert. I don't know if it was past or future, it felt quite futuristic, but who knows. And then the other option is that it was Mars. And the reason I say that is because of the look of the landscape. So. If anybody else out there has been to Mars, I'd love to hear your stories too. Thank you for listening.